Which will burst first, your concentration or the level you're working on? It takes more than just swinging the bubble turret and taking aim on the falling ceiling. Tactical planning and mental dexterity are the only way to string together three or more bubbles and 100 wins to make it through all the bubble and ego bursting rounds of Bust a Move. And that means this is Bust a Move from the Taito Corporation released March 1995, also known as Puzzle Bobble in Japan and Puzzle Bobble Bust a Move in Europe because they couldn't pick one, so they went with both. And of course, it's part of the Puzzle Bobble slash Bust a Move series of games, uh, which if you've ever had a mobile device ever, you have seen this game a million billion times. If you've ever played a console, you've seen this game a million billion times. Uh, it's a basic tile matching game, uh, kind of based around the bubble bobble line, and um, pretty popular game. Uh, really good graphics, really good music, really good control, and uh, you know, it's um, it's pretty darn good. It's just a fun little puzzle game, great to play with other people, and great to play by yourself. Reviewing the Super NES version, Mike Weigland of Electronic Gaming Monthly called it a thoroughly enjoyable and incredibly addicting puzzle game. He considered the two-player mode the highlight, but also said that the one-player mode provides a solid challenge. GamePro, what do they know, gave it a generally negative review, saying it starts out fun but ultimately lacks intricacy and longevity. They elaborated that in one-player mode, all the levels feel the same and the two-player matches are over too quickly to build up any excitement. They also criticized the lack of 3D effects in the graphics. Next Generation reviewed the SNES version stated it's very simple using only the controller pad and one button to fire and it's addictive as hell. A reviewer for Next Generation, while questioning the continued viability of the action puzzles genre, little did they know, admitted that the game is very simple and very addictive. It's even in italics. He remarked that though the 3DO version makes no significant additions, none are called for by a game with such simple enjoyment. You hear that, Game Pro? GamePro's brief review of the 3DO version commented, The move and shoot controls are very responsive and the simple visuals and music are well done. This is one puzzler that isn't a bust. So wait, the 3DO one was better because it didn't have 3D graphics, but the Super Nintendo one was bad because it didn't have 3D graphics? Is that what you're telling me, GamePro? Screw you. Look, basic puzzle game. Basic action puzzle game. I said you've seen it a million times because it's a formula that works. And I have one other quick question. Why the hell is anybody reviewing this for the 3DO? Eight people owned a 3DO, and of those eight, four of them didn't work all the time. 